Welcome back to NBA Today. Here's a look at the Rookie of the Year odds. Paolo Bancaro, runaway favorite at minus 950. And he was in action with the Philadelphia 76ers hosting the Orlando Magic last night. When I say Paolo Bancaro went to work, boy, did I mean it. We pick it up in the second quarter here. Markel Fultz gets a steal, pushes it ahead. Paolo with the slam. My goodness, what a jam for the rookie. And then once again, Nice move, draws the foul, and one layup gets it to go. And then a few minutes later, the Magic down by nine. Ben Caro working over P.J. Tucker, hits the jumper, gets it to go. A nice shot there by Ben Caro. And then just over two minutes left here, Ben Caro laces up the three ball over James Harden. I mean, the Magic mounted a major comeback in this one. Friends Wagner passes it to Ben Caro emphatically slams it down. He had 29 points, nine rebounds, and the Magic go on to win it. So fresh off of the Magic's win, we are joined by the man himself, Paolo Bencaro. Thanks for making a little bit of time for us here on NBA Today. Thank you for having me on. Of course. Actually, I should be addressing you differently. Rising star, Jordan rising star, freshly named <laughs> Paolo Bencaro at the All-Star Game. Where were you? How did you find out? What does it mean to you? Yeah, uh, well, I was right here in this hotel room. Uh, you know, they they informed us or informed me that, you know, we'd be hearing about it later in the day. And um, just just blessed, you know, to be able to be a part of All-Star Weekend. Um, it's been a dream of mine, obviously, since I was a young young kid, you know, watching it every year. Um, so being able to be a part of it is, is special. That's awesome. We cannot wait to watch you. Paolo, the Magic, you've won your last four games against the Celtics and the Sixers at the time, the top two seeds in the East, and no one else has beaten Boston three times this season. What do you attribute this team's success to against those Goliaths of the Eastern Conference? Yeah, I think, you know, just our ability to compete and, um, you know, be able to, you know, play hard and trust each other. I think we've been learning that as the season went on. Um, you know, we started off rough, had a lot of injuries, um, weren't healthy. But, you know, as of late, you know, I would say the past probably month and a half, two months, we just really came on and clicked as a team and just starting to learn how to really win games. Mm. And, uh, you know, and, and we see that we can play with anybody, we can beat anybody. And it's just a matter of if we can, you know, establish it and, um, you know, replicate it, you know, game after game. I think that's what we're learning how to do. But, you know, we definitely know that we can play with anybody and we can beat anybody. Yeah, I think it's fair, right, to call last night's win a, a statement win against Philly. It's the first one you've won in Philly, the Magic has, since 2016. What sort of message, I think, for the last couple of years, the Magic maybe were the, the punchline a little bit. What kind of message does that send to the rest of the league? Um, I mean, I just think, you know, teams got to take us serious. Um, you know, we're really talented, you know, on top of, you know, being a great team and, you know, having great chemistry, you know, we got a lot of talent, um, a lot of size, just a lot of guys who are skilled. And I think, you know, we're a tough matchup for a lot of teams and um, and we're young, you know, we just got a lot of players who are learning. So I think teams see that, players um, on other teams see that. And I think, you know, they're going to keep having to take us serious. Well, speaking of size, you have the average tallest starting lineup in the NBA in a time where folks are playing fast, they're playing small, pushing the pace. What do you think that, how does that set you apart? Yeah, yeah, like you said, you know, we got one of the biggest lineups, if not the biggest lineup in the league. And, um, you know, we're able to, you know, have five guys out there who can really handle the ball, um, shoot, dribble pass. Um, so it's kind of positionless. Um, you know, we don't really go out there with guys playing, you know, forward, center. Um, you know, we just kind of have guys who can play everywhere. You know, anyone can bring it up you know, off the break. Anyone can shoot threes, um, set screens, you know, um, you know, be the screen setter or the ball handler. And uh, I just think it makes it you know, hard to match up with us. Mm. When you were taken number one overall, Paolo, we spoke in the summer and you said there were some folks, right, who didn't necessarily see that pick coming. And it gave you a fuel. It made you feel like you had something to prove. Do you feel like you've proven it? Uh, Yeah, I think I've proven it to, you know, the people who may have doubted. Um, but I also feel like I have a lot more to, to prove to myself. You know, I think, you know, one of my goals coming out was to, obviously prove those who, who thought otherwise wrong. But, you know, I also felt like I have a lot to prove to myself and just how far, you know, I want to be, you know, along as a player. Um, obviously, I'm not there yet. Um, I got a lot of work to do, but 
just keep on, you know, seeing what I can do. And, um, you know, sometimes you surprise yourself, but, you know, most of the time, you know, you do what's expected of you. And uh, I have high expectations of myself. So just trying to um, continue to meet those and, you know, win games. Before we let you go, Paolo, we, we shared the odds a couple of minutes ago, but I'm much more interested in what you think. Why are you the rookie of the year? Uh, I, I mean, I just feel like, you know, I've, I've tried to come out and put forth my best effort, you know, game by game every night. Um, you know, I think I've not only, you know, been able to have success, um, you know, myself, but just also the team. I think our team's had, you know, a lot of a lot of success, a lot of guys who have taken, you know, a great step in their in their years from last year and the previous years. I think we just everyone's gotten better. I think the Magic are, you know, we're a team that um, we just, you know, we feel like we can be taken serious and that, you know, we can be in contention. And so um, I think, you know, me helping helping that and, you know, helping affect winning has, uh, you know, just really um, kind of just showed that, but also still being able to learn and, um, you know, get better. But yeah. With you and with this group, I do not think the Magic are a team that many folks are taking lightly anymore. Paolo Bencaro, thank you so much for spending a little time with us here on NBA Today. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me on. I really appreciate it. You will see Paolo Bancaro in the Rising Stars Challenge and joining him there, you can see the sophomores selected, including Scotty Barnes, Evan Mobley, Jalen Green. There will also be G League players, including projected top two pick Scoot Henderson. And these 21 NBA players will be drafted onto three teams each of them are on three teams, and then the seven G League players, they're going to make up a fourth team. A little bit of a different format that we've seen the last couple of years. This is going to be fun. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.